This week's episode of UDSP is brought to you by, well, look at that, Wildstar. For 25% off on your pre-order, that is both the standard or the deluxe version, just head on over to GameBreaker.tv slash deals. Look around. You'll find it. It's pretty easy to spot. And that's big, big money off. What's up, everybody? Welcome to uh, UDSP. Mini Bird Dog Shadow Puppet, episode 42 from May 7, 2014. Uh, it's been a while. We haven't been around. We have a couple weeks off. We've been sick. We're back. It's May. It's almost close to Wildstar. What are we going to talk about this week? I don't know. We got betas going everywhere. We're going to talk about some new body type stuff. We talk holidays, all kinds of crazy stuff about the Wildstars. Joining me, as always, Mr. Farhan Siddiqui. How are you, sir? Good, good. Ready to go. We're back. Excellent. We're back. Been We're back. Two weeks. Mr. Uh, Mike was Mike Byrne was heading us up for a while there, but then yeah. you know we had like a little bit off week. I was like, okay, we'll we'll get there next week, and then just kept going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then today I had like this medical thing, so it's like, okay, but we're gonna do a little bit later. So hopefully some you know more people were able to catch the live show today. You know, he found so a I see the numbers a little bit there, so ready to go. Yeah, we're a little low. In, we're, we're shooting at a weird, really weird time, but I'm back for a little while. I like Mike Byrne. Yep. He's going to come back soon. Probably a couple weeks. He's a little busy. Joining us, another one who's been MIA, Mr. Mark Taylor. How are What's you, going on? I'm back. Going to talk some <laughs> Wild Star. My life has been completely crazy for like, a, what, a month, two months now? So. I'm trying hard to get back. This this is a, a testament to the show. I was at PAX East. I was drinking beer at the little soiree that they had, and both Steve, Stephen Frost and uh, Chad Moore both came up to me at separate points in time and said, dude, when are you getting back on a show? So A, <laughs> Carbine watches the show, and B, they know all of the folks on the show, and they know the fans, and they, they, they really like the show. This is one of the shows that they actually watch. So I, I have done every single, every single thing I can to do in my power to make sure I could actually be here today. Well, the game uh, hasn't given... come out yet, so we haven't started talking shit about it, so they still like us. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait well, until it's, it's actually on the market. Back to wow. <laughs> no, right now it's all about like hyping it up, and we're talking about everything good, and then it'll come out, and then we'll just talk bad about it all week, and they'll just hate us and be like, screw those guys, we hate those guys, we don't ever want to talk to those guys again, don't give them press access to anything. So, But, but I am wearing my PAX East shirt that they gave out, though. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Wild star and uh, all right. I'm, 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 let's let's uh, let's see what we got going on. We didn't have a show last week, and, and there's been a lot going on. We're getting close. It's counting down. Um, but last Wednesday, some surprises. A couple surprises. First up, if people didn't know, this is kind of a pretty big surprise. Scooter, um, David Bass, community lead over at the carbine people know his face especially if you hit the forums you probably see him he uh he left i don't think anybody yeah. saw this coming have we any uh explanation or anything of what's going on just like life stuff or what have we heard yeah he made a farewell message that sort of jumped straight into it right you know just like you know just so you know this, this is my farewell message and sort of talked about some of the challenges that he had going there and just that he it was a really hard decision for him is what he said so it doesn't seem like they're leaving on like bad terms or anything for all intents and purposes it seems like this is just something that happened some personal thing that he just felt like this is probably the best time for him to you know take his leave and and you know it's in retrospect it seems like okay yeah you know they hired on a, a several new community people right before in the, in the weeks before, so it seems like I think a weird time. Right? It seems like a weird time. Like he's been the face, like you know, on the community side for a long time now. Everybody got to know him. He's doing the live yeah. stream thing. He's doing all this stuff, and then the game hasn't launched yet. And he didn't see launch through. So I don't know. Well, good luck. Good luck to Mr. David. I like David. I've been hanging I, out with David a I, bunch of times at I, conferences and stuff. He's a good guy. I think it's also code that he's probably got another opportunity somewhere, or he's seen the writing on the wall that he's not going to get to be the lead. CM for this specific game. So if you're there, and they had Troy, who was his, I guess his boss, for lack of a better word, and then 
when Troy leaves and there's a gap for what six months and then they hire somebody else to be the lead and they don't choose you to be the lead that's kind of like the writing on the wall that what, was not he gonna... not community lead at that point when he left because he I mean I, I don't actually remember what his Tro exact Troy was Troy was the... okay so as I see it and maybe I'm I'm wrong Troy Troy Hewitt was the lead right and then yeah. he left and then there was like what a four or five six month void was it just a vacuum? And there was this there was this French guy who was supposed to be the lead, which according to PR, they didn't even know he was the lead when, when they did that final show on um late night Dominion and they announced it, apparently they didn't tell Carbine that. So when I was talking to the PR folks, they were like, What? What are you talking about? You can't have an interview with this guy because he's the live producer, blah, blah, blah. They didn't know, so you know. Obviously, they were getting a little lit, getting their sip on, kind of like this right here. <laughs> and they didn't tell Carbine, so then Troy bolted, and then that guy kind of moved on to just being a live uh, community uh, guy, which is basically after the game goes live. So he's got a regular job. So then they brought in Tony Ray, who is totally awesome, totally amazing. He made is. him the lead uh, see him. So, I mean, I'm just trying to say from the cheap seats from, like, where I sit, and this is from the perspective of a guy who's run a guild and a fan site. I ran Tour Syndicate for a tour with David Bass, you know, for years, you know, 2010, 2011, you know. So I, I go back many years with David Bass, right? And then he didn't get the lead. I was like, okay, because Stephen Reed was the lead over at Bioware. So I don't know. I don't have any total, any any real ideas. But I'm just thinking that he saw the writing on the wall. If t they brought Tony Ray in from, what is it? Uh, what the heck is that game? The Firefall. Thing? Firefall, right? Yeah. To to go be the the lead uh, CM. Then I think he's like, well, I'm not going to make lead CM here or no time soon. So he's probably got picked up somewhere else. That's the only thing I can think of, or he's just doing something different. Well, he didn't say, so. <laughs> Whatever well, it is, I mean, you know, he's, okay, he's well, moving on. We got we got Tony, and, and Tony's awesome, so, you know. We got how important do you guys, you guys think, is, is it like, you, do you think, uh, I mean, is it super important to have a really awesome CM lead for a game like this? It depends, like it, on, it depends on the crowd, right? Like for me, it completely is because if if you your community's not alive and you don't have somebody representing your game, reaching out to guilds, which is you know my big thing, you know my community that I come in, I come into a game with my community. Does that make sense? I try to reach out, establish a community, join a community, build a fan site if I like it enough, or do things like this and try to promote the game and join the community and become a part of that community if it's something that I think I want to do. But like, let's say that that's not there, that's not an outlet. I'm bringing like 300 plus people in my guild that is my community. And if you're not like welcoming, then, you know, that's a big, that's a big turnoff. That right now, and I'm going to take a big swing and get a lot of hate mail. That's a big problem that Star Citizen has, right? That, you know, that that's just one game. And that's not even an MMO, but you know, there there are games out there. A game that was really welcoming that, that isn't Wildstar is, is Elder Scrolls. They had a great community that was already there. They had a great CM. That's one thing that, you know, this game has had, you know, they've they've rotated the folks. But it is very, very important to the people that are active, you know, because now you can plan and organize going to conventions. When it came to PAX East just a few weeks ago, I had guild members fly from California from Florida, from Georgia, from Virginia, from Maryland to Boston just to come out for Wildstar. They were hanging with their guild members, but they were going to geek out about Wildstar and go to events. Did they see other things? Yes. But the focus was Wildstar. So to just grok that for a minute. Think about that. You, you know what I mean? That's a powerful... Um, demonstration of people speaking with their money and their time to try to show interest. Speaking on that, do you guys like the hype, right? We've been talking about forever. We, I'm last, we, it's been a while since the three of us done a show together, but last we kind of talked about it. We were all, I think, kind of in the same mode of going like, when are they going to turn the marketing faucet on? Like, when are people going to start really knowing about this game? When is it really going to turn on? 
it kind of turned bouncing on. off of what yeah, are you feeling that like besides i mean of course in guild umbra you're gonna get it it's turned on pretty early right you're talking about people who are like really dialed in in the know but i'm talking about the masses of people out there the average joe who just plays a game doesn't watch this show doesn't even maybe go to forums doesn't care who or david bass who what wherever doesn't make a difference are the average the getting the message out to the average person uh just gamer or mmo fan at least uh that that wildstar really exists i mean we've been shouting it forever you know like but i'm wondering they have if a it's full still page on. they have a full page ad in this month's maximum pc and and i just like a print magazine yeah well I, it's dead i was failure. it's over i was on the throne when i figured it out the anyway. print read the print come on bro i was leading from my throne when i realized it but but at at in you boston still read during... magazines really oh read yeah pc oh, magazines yeah. Uh, yeah 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 so in that's because you in have boston... to be you have to be f over 40 then get off my lawn uh, yes i'm <laughs> way yeah. over 40 but um kind of makes makes sense now but um in in boston during pax east there were taxis that had the wild star stuff on their side there were trash cans all throughout Boston that ha that were using the trash can as a mini billboard. There were billboards that had Wildstar. So throughout Boston for Paxis, they spent a lot of dough. It was the first time I'd seen anything. But um, but to your point, you know, to like the regular person who's not spending the money to go to a convention, they have a full page spread in this month's maximum PC, which I've had a subscription to since 1988. I mean, it's it's a great match. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, exactly. <laughs> You and the forty-year-olds, you all, you and three others are going to see that magazine. I, I think that, like, <laughs> seeing some of the, because because I'm a pretty active redditor, and when I'm looking at some of the more general gaming reddits, like uh, our games and other ones, then uh, over, over the past week and a half or so, there's been almost every other day or every three days, there's like a wild star thing coming up. It's like, oh, you know, open beta started, or uh, you know that, or starting. Or and uh, other information about like there there was an interview with Jeremy Gaffney and other things, and you know sort of ties in with I, I think that when the general gaming public, especially like on some of those websites, they don't really care that much about Wildstar. They, they think that it's like oh it's just another MMO, it's just another one because you know suffice it to say like MMOs are are big, but they are still a very small niche out of like the whole gaming circle mm -hmm. right and so when most regular gamers see that stuff they're like ah it's just another mo i don't really care about that kind of stuff but the thing is that you know and this sort of plays back to what we we're talking about with the community management stuff like uh, I, I think that mark is definitely right that a good cm that's reaching out to communities and doing all that is really really effective and a really powerful force for getting those people who are actually already in the mmo thing but you know the thing that attracted me first of all to wildstar back way back in the day and just the thing that I can get other people usually is is if I show them the interactions that these developers themselves actually not just the community team but like Stefan Frost like uh, Bardic on from the PvP team like just everyone whenever that they see that okay these people are interacting with you know the general gaming public the the fans and giving them feedback giving them real answers about their 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 you know concerns and actually executing changes on that like we've seen in beta. That is what I think is the thing that Wildstar really just does really, really well. That that is like, oh wow, like this is a team that actually really cares about their game and that they're actually trying their best to make it a really powerful game, a really good game. So, so I think that that's something that Wildstar actually does have, you know, going for it. Well, don't get me wrong. Like that's what I'm saying. Like I think we've been we've been shouting from the rooftops for a while now that there's some really cool, interesting things in Wildstar and it's looking really good. But my fear is that not not the masses are going to see it. I hope so. And you know, I guess you know what scares me a little bit is um, I mean, like I said, we've been we you know we've got a great deal going on with it. You saw at the top of the show, so we've been telling everybody about that and save some money, and we've been doing the show and all that stuff. But um, one thing that kind of scares me a little bit is like I wonder if this whole what do you guys think of this whole so, and Carbine really embraced being out in the forefront of like social media and live streaming and all of this stuff like really embraced it right like, i mean they're doing regular live streams like all the time you know and they were a lot of them with, with david bass and stuff showing off new stuff and new content um allowing streamers to stream quite early on 
But I yep. do notice that when betas and stuff kind of pop up, I gotta say, like they don't rise on the Twitch charts like I kind of anticipated them to rise to, especially with the closed beta stuff. Like open beta is gonna be different. Everybody's gonna be playing it. I would have thought that on a regular basis when we were in these closed betas weekends, that they'd be higher up. I mean, they're, they're, they're down. I see like, I see, that, you know, depending on so, who plays it, if somebody really big plays it, it skews the numbers, but I see like yeah. the seven, 800 number. And it's like, I don't see it in the thousands. I don't see it in that top two rows. And it kind of scares me a little bit. Well, well, the thing is that, you know, like I, I agree with you. That actually was a big concern for me when I first, when Wildstar was first streaming and I was like, Oh, why isn't, why aren't the people watching this, this game? And I think it is because, you know, people just didn't know about it that much, but then you have like another game that, you know, like I've, I mentioned the pre-show a little bit that I've been playing a little bit, Heroes of the Storm, which definitely has a ton of hype going on because it's another Blizzard game. It's finally like a new, you know, I don't know if you could call it a new IP because it's using all their other IPs, but it's like a new game that has a lot of hype going on. And that game is getting, usually, unless you have like one of the big streamers, like you were saying, it's like 100 viewers or, or less than that. It's really low. Yeah. Another one. It's, it's another really one that I've really, I'm kind of blown away how low it is. I this is this is what I hear from folks in my guild because I've been asking pretty much that same question like why is this not getting more hype or or even why do you not care more why are you not logging and playing because you know the fortunate reality is we're in a lot of these alphas or pre alphas and betas and so you know we get to do a lot of the guild testing of guild, guild mechanics um, you know, certain guilds get it, get in before us, so it's not like you know we're super special, but we are fortunate. And the answer I get back consistently is, it has nothing to do about the hype of the game. It has nothing to do about the game. What I get back is a weird, counterintuitive um, response. Um, heck, spoken is spoken revenge is like in what? the chat. What do you mean? Like what kind of responses are you hearing? The the response that he and a lot of others give me is they're like. I'm playing that game. It's already met all my criteria to play, and I I want to keep it fresh. So I'm just not going to play any more of the beta, and I'm going to play other things as fodder between now and when that game comes out because I know I want to play that game. Like within one, two, or three days or whatever, all of their criteria were met. So they're like, um, okay, I know I'm playing that really? game when it comes out. I'm you're, not you're gonna go with you. the you're gonna give me go with the the game is so overhyped that there's too many players and they're staying away no, no, from I, it. Car, no, no, it's, it's not, not overhyped. That. It's it's not overhyped. What I'm saying is they know that they are well, gonna you're go, spend you're, their money. You're, you're to going play with the, that many. So you're going with that many players are already sold on it to the point that they're staying away from it because they don't well, the want to ruin it. I'm not buying. They want to keep. They want to keep some stuff fresh. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna come in enough to see shows like this stuff that Farhan does to figure out like any like how do I get ahead right <laughs> but other than that it's 2014 Gary people know if they're going to want to play game X or game Y you know they can they're going to no, my, well, my point is I don't I don't think people still I still don't think people really know what it is I don't think the masses <clears> know what it is so they see that box down on Twitch and I don't think they know what Wildstar is and they see this crazy <laughs> chew it thing they don't know what that is I don't okay, think the masses so, know so, what the game is yet okay, maybe that's so okay point, maybe it's a, maybe it's a good slow burn that maybe that maybe that's the strategy I'm just saying I don't think so, people so, know what so it to is your point, I don't think people still know why they should play this game so we're looking at it from two different perspectives I'm looking at it from Anybody who's looking at Game Breaker TV right now, anybody who's in chat right now, are gamer elite. Yes, these absolutely. are the high end. This high, is the high, high watermark end. players, right? The these best are the of people. The best. Who, You're the best. These are the people around. These are the da, people da, da, who da, give. Da, 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 da. <laughs> but but seriously, if you're pay, if you're spending your time right now to watch this live stream, you give a shit. You care about being good at the I game just, or knowing right. about the game. Mark Taylor, there's um, 182 people here. So I don't know if Wiles, that's 182 times 30 so, or 15. So, um, I don't know about my math, but I don't think they could run more than a month. So so to your point, the masses, it's going to be a slow burn. It's gonna. This is going to be a game that's going to come out. It's going to be niche. It's going to, it's, and it's going to grow slowly over time. And and people look at wow it wow just me. It reported me. today. I mean, we're we're wow, a time today. Day. They lost two hundred thousand players today. They, 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 they haven't updated they, in like 
months and months. It's almost like a year. <laughs> and it's and it's right before another expansion. This happens yeah. all the time. And, and, and an extended expansion, which means that people are a little bit bored. So sure, but I don't know. I'm even surprised. I got to say, like 187 people in chat room. Yeah, I love you. You're great. I love you. There should be two, three thousand people here. There's the final fan. When we were at this point with Final Fantasy 14, two thousand people showing up. Two, three thousand people showing up. We've got 190 people here in the chat. We're changing That's, the we're changing the this, time so people can't. They don't know when to come, but. Oh but, yeah, I, but, let's do it on the normal time next week. It'll be 100, 200 people. <laughs> like, I mean, let's be honest here. I'm trying to be honest. I'm not trying I, to uh, like sugarcoat yeah. it. I just don't. I, I don't think, think people. Now you're turning it. Okay. I don't think what people. I just don't think people know what it is. I don't, and I don't think they know why they should want to play this game. I don't think it's being communicated. Like I'm seeing the Chua around. I see it on Twitch. I see the ads. I still don't know why I should care. There's like I just. So who do we blame then? The thing is, go, I, go well, it's, I, it's, it's come something back. I've been saying okay. about Wildstar since the beginning is that, like, what do I grab onto here? You know, and they kind of went with the, the 40 man raid thing. And that's like the only thing that I ever kind of got that was like, this is why you should play it. If you're a hardcore raider, we're bringing back the 40 man raids. But beyond that, I'm like, I, I, I don't know. The, you the and I is, all know. I, I We've all like, played it. I feel like Wildstar's strongest point and the thing that really makes it shine for me and the reason why I'm so excited about it more than anything else is just the combat system is so good and so fun to actually like fight mobs and, and to do the dungeons and do, to do all that stuff. But the thing is that it's really actually, you, you they, they nerfed their early game so much that it takes quite a while. So even the people who, because access, I mean, to be fair, access to the game is actually pretty open right now, right? Yeah. Uh, Open beta aside, anyone who pre-ordered the game was able to get into the beta weekends, and we had more than just the four beta weekends we were expecting. We had, I think, we had like seven, six yeah, or seven. The, the last beta round weekend. of beta keys, there was beta so, keys everywhere on the internet, so it wasn't. Yeah, they, they were beta. everywhere. So even if you didn't pre-order, you're still able to get in. And the thing is that most people were like, like this is what I'm reading when I'm reading those uh, like R games, more general uh, subreddits, people's descriptions. They're they're playing like the first half hour of the game or the first two hours of the game. And leveling is slow in Wildstar, and that first part you don't get to feel the the intensity of the combat, the, the, how good it is, and and the, all all the classes seem a little bit generic, but they're actually played really really differently to the point where if you don't like one class, it'll actually feel like I hate this game because it's so different than when you play another class and you pick it up and you start playing it and it's like oh this is the thing for me, so there's so many things in there that I, I feel like a lot of the early impression stuff that people get in when, when somebody, you know, like, because usually this happens, right, where you have, like, a couple people in a group of friends will try out the game, and then they'll tell everyone else in their group. They'll say, okay, this is what I think. And if they have that negative experience in those first few levels, and, like, the, you know, to be fair, the beta weekends had, like, optimization issues. Like, I, I my frame rate dropped a lot compared to what it was a couple months ago. I don't know why, but, I mean, like, they're, they're changing stuff. Hopefully they'll improve it. But, like, because there's server a crashes, more everything people else. Playing. <laughs> well, right. I mean, there, there are a lot more people, but I mean, like, even like in other areas where there, you wouldn't expect there. Anyway, server crashes, other stuff. Like, there's a lot of things that were really dampening down some of this hype that's coming in for a lot of the the more general public who are just starting to get into Wildstar. And so I feel like that really sort of maybe damage some of the stuff that's that's why you know we're you know we're going to talk about this a little bit more in detail but they're raising the level cap they're doing a lot of other stuff to try to let people see the really really shiny awesome parts of wildstar so i hope that it's not going to do like really lasting terrible damage but you know hopefully I guess what I'm no, also, I guess what I'm getting there. at too is that I'm wondering if this whole new sort of like, you know, really be super open and live stream and show everything and let people play and get into it really early and stuff. I don't know. It might, it might, it might kind of kill a little bit of the mystique and the mystery around like, you know, how good a game is going to be. And we don't really have it anymore because everybody's in it and play it. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, everybody here, I'm sure everybody in the chat room here has bought it. Everybody on this panel has bought it. Like, we're all going to play it. Like, we're, you know, we're preaching. I'm just talking about the real outside. All right, let's talk about it. We got beta. Open beta is coming up. So this time, if you didn't get in last round of beta, which there were, like I said, beta keys absolutely everywhere. Every website on the planet pretty much had them. Um, you know, the pre-order beta weekends are all done. Those are done. And now we've got the open beta coming up. So everybody is going to get to play from May 8th through the 18th. So you got 10 days. That's a pretty decent length beta. I was actually surprised. They're just going to do it open 10 days. I thought it was going to maybe be another weekend kind of thing. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm good. 
Okay, yeah, I'm really happy that it was that it's going to be a full like 10, 11 days. Yeah, I don't know if the 18th actually counts as a day, full day or not, but uh, it's really nice because what it means is that they're, if, you know, inevitably they're going to be like server issues in the first few days if, if the beta weekends have been any, you know, indication. So we can have like a nice few days of, of everything is calm, everything is stable, everything is nice, and we can, you know, actually enjoy the game, start getting into it. So I'm really happy that they actually extended that out a little bit. So we can really get people going in there. Mark, you had something? Mark, you were saying? Uh, so they're going to definitely have to optimize their net code. They're definitely going to have to optimize however they're load balancing and however they're providing bandwidth to accept X amount of you know, layer 5 OSI model sessions to the server to optimize that. Right, because the problem that we've had historically within all of the tests, whenever they allow more people in, is just getting dropped and kicked from the server like a basketball, like someone's dribbling. Once they overcome that, which I think that's probably academic at this point, then they're going to have to do a couple of things in terms of optimizing the drivers for people's video cards. They're going to have to optimize what it looks like. Once they accomplish those, then I think it's going to be pretty much free sailing. I mean, that's obviously, it's much easier for me to say all that than for them to do it. But once they accomplish that, I think people are going to be able to just get in and just start playing and having fun. But this last weekend was the first time I've seen the servers just kicking people like every five seconds. You know, Yeah. because we've been playing the game for what, almost a year now. Um, I hadn't seen that in a while, so it was there was something that has happened, whether it's like a regression testing kind of issue over the last patch that that kind of that came back, right? Because I have not seen that for a long time. But so what's the so this this weekend, uh, you know, they they were pretty open about it actually. Like if you read the server announcements that came up on the launcher and in, in in like the actual game when you're there, uh, apparently they had like an issue with some change that they made to the AI code, where it was actually like hard crashing the server whenever like something was happening with the AI code. So they had to wait for the AI guy to come in from like you know they were like oh he's probably like in the middle of uh, like shaving or something in the morning, so we can't really bring him in or any or quicker. But then once he comes in, then their you know like their operations guy was talking about how he was just walking around pacing outside of the AI guy's office waiting for him to check out the the fix to but, that so but that's kind of scary if you have to wait on the AI guy there should be an AI team at this level of game if you're talking about a triple A I mean it's, it's probably you know, like and, and I'm not a... trying to shit talk these guys cuz I like them I'm just saying when you when, when I hear and I'm a data center cloud architect guy right when I hear you say we're waiting on the AI guy. That means that there's one of them, right? There needs to be the AI team, right? Because if he gets hit by a bus, we're fucked, right? We need to have the AI team so that we can optimize. Because so if he gets killed, dies of a heart attack, gets killed in a bus crash, goes on vacation, Shows we're not screwed. Dark. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just saying, come on, man. This is a triple A MMO that you're launching. They've got a robust team. I know some people have left, and you know, in the past week, uh, what was the other the the combat developer that left? Chris, know, Chris Lynch left Chris, about a week and a half. Before. Chris Lynch left a week yeah. ago. People are like, oh my god, Chris Lynch is leaving. Like he is a great guy. I've I've spoke with him. He's a great dude. But the thing is, is you know, the combat's already baked in. They, they don't yeah. need him. The anymore, combat is yeah. designed. You don't need the combat design lead as yeah. much. Yeah, you know, it's time no. for him to go find another job. I mean, that's just the unfortunate reality of the game industry. But I'm just trying to say, back to, you know, the critical things, the things that will not go if things break, is you can't have one AI, dude. That's unacceptable. I mean, I don't know exactly what was going on with that, but it, it, I mean, like, if it was the issue where he checked out a specific bit of code that was crashing, the, like, the quickest way to fix it is to wait for the guy who wrote the bug to, to go in and, and undo whatever it was that, that he did. You know, whatever the case was, they were at least, at the very least, even if we were having issues, I, I, I do want to give the ops team props for being really, really active on the forums, on Twitter, and on the server announcements about giving pretty honest stuff. Like, usually, you know, when the a server is crashing and, and it's not working, then we get a really generic message of like, you know, we're working on it or something like that. We, we expected up maybe, maybe they'll give you an ETA or something, but at best, this is like, 
you know, we screwed up. Like, it was literally, like, the guy wrote in the server announcement, like, this sucks. I know, but, you know, it, it'll get fixed, so. All right, but we're splitting hairs here. I mean, now we're really digressing down, down a road. Let's, let's get some <laughs> for this. Going back to beta. <laughs> I, I, I no, 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 no. No, this is it's a little bit different. This is a little bit different. I, I want to talk about how, like, because we, we got the patch notes for the open beta, and just in terms of optimization, there's a lot of stuff in there. They're talking about how uh, for video cards, they have SLI support now and Crossfire support. So video people with, like, the Uber systems with two video cards or more, video cards going in there they've got their optimization hopefully in there now uh they they one thing that sort of bothers me a little bit and i want to get gauge your impressions on this is that they said that for alazar and alicia which are the names of the two super continents like the one that the xl main city is on and the one that the uh, uh dominion main city is on those continents now have a population cap so that if you, it goes over to that, they'll spin up an, a new instance of that thing so that people, w I mean, like, on the one hand, I'm thinking, okay, well, that'll cut down on queues, server queues, and it, you know, if there's a server capacity that they feel like, okay, this is our capacity for the continent, if it's going over, that's what's causing a lot of crashes, then yeah, I would rather not be in a queue, but now we have sharding of the actual continent service. Instead of it just be, it used to just be the first one through three experience was the only part that was really segmented off in the open world but now alizar the whole alizar continent and the whole elysia continent are subject to that where if it gets over to a population cap you're going to be put into a new version of it so what do you guys think of that like eh. <laughs> no, no no comment no worries about it nope i mean it, it is nice that they have like the little thing where you can like right click on your on the person's portrait and and be switched to the other server, but I I do find it like this was supposed to be an open world. It was supposed to be all there. Don't care. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> I mean, so okay, so we're still in the pre-open beta. We're very close to the open beta. They've got a couple of issues, but they overcame them, you know, during the beta weekend. So it's not like the sky is falling. You know, I'm just saying, you know, we could point out some of the things that we saw that were regression testing issues that, you know, we saw six months ago. They seem to have been fixed. We've got the new patch. They kind of regressed and had some of those old issues. They've seen it. They're fixing it. They're working on it. We're moving forward. Um, it's like the show should next, move forward, I think. Yeah, next, That's next what I'm issue. <laughs> So here's how it's going to work, people. Beta. Open beta is coming. If you've been in beta before, your account's automatically flagged. You don't even have to worry about it. All the Everybody who's been in a previous beta, your account's flagged, and you're in the next beta. Anyone who's not gotten in beta, go to the Wildstar site. Wildstar's going to be providing keys for everybody else out there who hasn't been in a previous beta. So um, the other good news, they're, le they're raising level cap for those of you who want to kind of grind up and see what's going on. They're going all the way to 30, so you got 10 days for it. So kind of good, considering the weekend's beta started off at like 15 or something like that so they've they've increased that quite a bit um how long you, what, what's the average time right now taking taking somebody to get to 30 how, how quick is that going to happen 48 hours oh hell no what do you mean by average you need yeah, a, i don't know a, not average it, i just say somebody's it, going to max level by by it, how long it completely depends on if you're solo or if you're in a group if you're in a group maybe two three weeks <laughs> it's gonna take you a while if you're in a group maybe five, five, six days from what I've seen. Farhan? If you know the content and you're in a group that's actually like really focused on leveling up as fast as possible, a day, less than a day to get that far. Um, but so most people, most people uh, to 30. Isn't that, what, isn't that what Gary asked? 30, 30, oh, 30, 30, the cap is 30. 30, yeah. To 30, yeah, I'd say a, a day for people who are really focused on it. But, uh, like, I think for the average person, there's so many things to distract you. There's so many things that you want to be distracted by. The crafting, the ship hands, the everything that is in there. That, And if you're, if you're not really, like, partaking in all that stuff, you're really missing out. So for those you people, it's going to gonna take... That's a lot of content. That's you, you need to qualify that statement, though. You need to qualify that... That's not like a dude who's just, or a person who's soloing. That's a person in a group 
who knows where to grind certain mobs. You know, they do X, y, X amount of quests, but then they also grind Y amount of mobs. That's you just need to qualify that. Out there. I think that if you if you actually just do regular questing, as long as you aren't ever doing quests that are below your level, because the experience cut off when you're doing quests that are below your level is really bad, and you have like a little bit of coordination with with your group or whatever in terms of crafting gear, so that you actually still keep up with good gear, so you can have a good kill time, you can actually level pretty pretty quickly. I mean it. It's a lot of combat, but for me, that's really fun. So I enjoy the challenges. I enjoy doing all that stuff. So I I actually can level up pretty quickly now. Uh, I mean, I've leveled up through 30-whatever, like, at least 10 times now. But <laughs> that's, yeah. It's it's not that slow anymore. How do, you, how do you kill that which has no life? <laughs> but see, that's the point, is that it's actually pretty quick if you know where to go. But most people won't. And, and to um, be fair, it's more fun when you're just exploring and going through and doing ship hands. So to, so to kick off, ship um, hands. to ship kick hands off the really open cool. beta, to kick off the open beta, they're going to be doing two live streams. Um, I think it's Thursday, correct? Is that tomorrow from this live yep. recording? So this Thursday, In eleven uh, hours. Yeah, you're gonna want to. You're gonna want to watch this one and pay attention to this one because uh, they're gonna have some head directors or a carbine giving a state of the game, um, and they're also gonna be answering a, a lot of the major questions that have been popping up on the forum. So if you're watching this show, make sure you get dialed in on that. That's on Thursday, um, and then on Friday, Carbine is gonna do a six-hour uh, developer uh, live stream covering the road to launch. Uh, they're gonna play by play of raids and war plots and maybe some uh, post-launch content which you're going to want to probably tune into that as well. So a whole lot of stuff to be shown off Thursday and Friday. Um, they're also going to be answering a ton of questions from like every social platform on Friday's live stream. So check that out. You'll be able to tweet in, I'm sure, and Facebook them and all that good stuff. So should be a good time. They've definitely been all about the live stream and they pretty much nailed it as far as like getting on the socials and that whole thing. Um, all right, just a few other things I want to talk about real quick. But first, I got to take a spot second to talk about our sponsor on this week's show, and that is Audible. Super happy to have Audible on to sponsor this week's UDSP. Want to hook you up with a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook. All you have to do is go over to audible.com slash gameburger. That's the URL you're going to want to go to and just sign up. You're going to get a free credit and choose any of the uh, well, most, not every single book I think is available for free, but almost all of them are. Um, I know a lot of you guys are probably guys and girls are probably World of Warcraft fans to some extent. And this just hit last, I think last night. Yeah, the 6th. Just hit last night. If you guys are World of Warcraft fans, even if you're not playing and you're looking forward to Wildstar, this is a great book. Awesome to check out. It's up on it's up on Audible already. It's the brand, brand spanking new World of Warcraft War Crimes book um, by Christy Golden. So let's take a listen real quick. It looks too peaceful and beautiful to be the prison of someone so horrible. Lady Jaina Proudmore mused as she approached the Temple of the White Tiger. She... The Blue Dragon Calicos, Ranger General Verisa Windrunner, and King Varian Wren rode in a cart drawn by a steady-footed yak, whose fluffy fur indicated the beast had been freshly bathed. In acknowledgment of the honored status of the passengers, the cart had been upholstered with silk cushions in vibrant shades, though the travelers did bounce a bit when a wheel hit a rut. Better than he deserves, said Uh, free, free, free. You can pick it up for free. If you guys want to check out War Crimes, the World of Warcraft book, brand new, just dropped. All you got to do is go to audible.com slash gamebreaker, sign up, make an account. Uh, this offer is good only for new accounts, obviously. And uh, you download the app, you put it on your iPhone or your Kindle or your Android or whatever you got. And you can pick up uh, World of Warcraft and War Crimes today. So check it out and go to audible.com slash gamebreaker. Thanks so much for having those, them on as sponsors. All right, so there's a lot of uh, other stuff coming up. That are, or stuff that have come up since we since we've done a show. So I'm just gonna kind of throw it out there. I don't know. Did you guys jump in last week? Any uh, anything new worth talking about from last weekend uh, weekend's event? You could change your body types if yes, you're building you new tunes. Yes. So yes. What do you think they about that? They brought back. They they finally have overcome the booby nerf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was thinking of you, Mark. When it was like he'll be happy. Yes. This image is 
maybe yeah. not the best one. You need we need a really a side profile to really see the difference. <laughs> Why nerf the boobies? Come on, man. We we talked about that already. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's really nice that they actually managed to get this into the game. It's quite. Quite quite a range of, of body types that you can pick. I mean, like for the most part, it's like okay, pick for the upper body, lower body, big, small, and then any combination of that for both male and female. And uh, uh, I mean, it's, sometimes it looks a little bit weird. Like if you look at the male, like the second one in that little list there, he he looks so just like I want to give this guy some food. My God, eat his a big one. Like, damn, his elbows are pretty <laughs> damn like almost gone. Yeah. <laughs> It's like but, skeleton you know, over hey, here. Maybe, maybe that's your thing. Maybe you want to play that. So, it's an option now. Are you guys happy with both of the body types, though? You think, uh, you think they kind of nailed it? Enough options? Yeah, I, I thought it was good. Um, they had it in the, well, if you played way back in Alpha when <laughs> Farhan and I did, they had this before. They just took it away. So. They just brought it back with presets, and so instead of having sliders to get you there, now you can just preset it. So it's not. So this is pretty much it, though, right? I mean, most people at this point, if people are not happy, they're probably SOL. I mean, they're probably unfortunately. I think this is pretty much what you've got. Yeah, this is the extent of what they can do without making the armor all look bad. Because and that that is one of the things I was curious about was, you know, is this gonna how does this? It looks fine with the starter co costume, but how does it look with some of the other armor sets? And you know, checking it out using like somebody made an add-on uh, called Galaxy Library that lets you like, preview any of the armor in the entire game, and uh, it, it actually looks pretty decent on most body types. So when you have like the really really big super giant Granok, it looks really quite intimidating compared to you know the anemic Granok. Granok. <laughs> so. You can you can have the range of whatever you want in there now, and I'm very happy to see that you can make a super fat Jua, because because who doesn't want to make a super fat Jua? <laughs> who doesn't, who doesn't want, want that? that, that Everybody want wants that. it. There's gonna be a gajillion super fat cute little Chua's running around, devious little things. All right, let's, uh, some other stuff they talked about holiday events. Um, we've actually known about you know the Wildstar holidays for a long time. There's at least three of them that we know of, right? Yeah, uh, Kadium wrote a little article about the the holiday events and talked about that they sort of want to have a main holiday at least early on. Um, you know, who knows what they're going to add in later on, but uh, for one for each major season, rather than it necessarily being exactly tied into the uh, like traditional like okay Halloween and Christmas kind of thing, it's more like okay here is our fall holiday, here is our uh, winter holiday, and and yeah, the winter holidays line up pretty close in time with Christmas. But still, like, it's not a Christmas holiday, it's the winter They want to holiday. avoid the whole, like, slap a Santa hat on a guy and call it a holiday yeah. kind of thing. So they want to do something a little bit cooler. What, what would you like to see? What do you think would be pretty cool? I think it'd be really cool if they did some uh, holiday events that actually had, like, some... You know, like, as much as I didn't enjoy, like, the, the timed content in uh, uh, the, the living story of Guild Wars 2, I, I think it'd be really cool if they actually push some of the quest lines forward with some of the holiday events and sort of talked about how, you know, maybe some of the factions are interacting with this holiday and, and what's going on with some of that stuff because they actually do have some pretty neat stuff. Uh, I know that all that we've really seen out of the holiday events is like, stuff from, like, years back. They had, like, blog posts where they had, like, a little, you know, thing about, like, Shades Eve, which is, i assuming, like, their fall uh, holiday event. And, and so, like, they, they have some neat lore there going into it. And so... Uh, what I really hope is that they actually tie it really well into the world rather than it just being sort of like plopped on top. And so, you know, I, I didn't really like how in other games you sort of have like a holiday event and then you just have these extra NPCs just sort of crowding the city and giving like quests every single year. And so you have to go into I'd really want it to be integrated more across the whole world instead of it just being inside of the one zone. I think Mark wants Oktoberfest. Hell yeah. I've been drinking some beer. Get my sip on. <laughs> One thing I just uh, thought of that's that's really important though. For before we move on, um, Arrow Wolf, who's in the channel, um, back to the tunes and you know the specs on how you want to build your sliders out for how you want your tune to look. Is Arrow Wolf on WildStarFans.net uh, created a great video that shows people how to not only spec out and make their tune the way they want to have them 
but then how to save the tune, get the URL, save it to a file so that when the game goes live, all you got to do is just paste in that URL, put in your name, and boom, you've got your tune within like three or four seconds. That's super handy. Yeah. So, so, you know, Mike Joseph, Airwolf, WildstarFans.net, look at the video. I tried to paste it in, but I don't have the permissions I need anymore, so they stripped out my, my URL. Go to WildstarFans.net. It's, it's great because that right there, you know, in addition to if you've pre-ordered and you can save your name, that will help you speed up, get your name, look the way you want to look, and then start playing as opposed to being like me, the jackass who spends an hour trying to make my tune look perfect, right? Real quick, one last thing about that, going back to the holiday event, though. We, we, we know that the, um, is the ship hands team is actually yep. doing them, right? So what do, what, do, what do you guys take away from that? Does it kind of give you any ideas? Well, uh, you know, just from doing, like, I've done the ship hands, and I actually think that there's some of the best content in the whole game. Like, outside of Dungeons, which is probably my favorite content in the game, the ship hands is, like, a really close second because it, it's really, really fun, the, the stuff that they come up with because, you know, obviously a lot of the assets that they use in there are, like, reused from other parts of the game. Like, they reuse some of the ships and stuff. But the way that they use it is so creative. Like, I think my favorite one is, is the one where you go insane. You steadily go insane as you go through the ship hand. And so you got, like, these crazy, like, you get, like, spoiler. You, whatever. You guys you guys will see it really quickly. <laughs> I mean, like, whatever. You, get, you got these, like, crazy psychedelic things going on. Like, little talking animals and flying books and other... I won't spoil all of it, but it's really, really fun, the, the stuff that they come up with. So that team, I think, is really, really just top-notch in reusing some of the assets. So, so basically, they can pull together content pretty quickly uh, from existing art and still do something really creative with it through the scripting of the game. So that's really exciting that if they're the people who are doing the holiday event, then that means that we're probably going to get some pretty awesome content. So I'm really looking forward to that. Have you played the ship hands, uh, Mr. Taylor? You big fan? I have, but I've I've not played that one. But yeah, the ship hands are awesome. The the one thing that this game is not getting enough hype about. I mean, they're I I think they're not hyping themselves enough, and I don't know if that's a carbine or an NC soft thing, but they are not. To your point earlier, um, but their their ship hands, their adventures, their raids, all of that specific content is high end. So. If you're looking for really challenging game mechanics, like raid boss type mechanics, you will find that in a ship hand just for like two people or whatever. You will find that in an adventure for like five people. You will find that in the raid for 20 people. I mean, the, the mechanics are hard. They're, they're challenging, but they're not so hard that it's like it pisses you off because you can see what it's wanting you to do you just have to be able to execute it. And so from that perspective, the hardcore gamers, the people who want to play games that are not for the casuals are going to love this game. And so this game will be the slow burn. This game will peer out the nasty casuals, you know, because the, unless, Ooh, unless, unless they go against their core principle that they have said that they're going to maintain from day one. And Farhan, keep me honest, this game is not your standard I'm level 50 in a day. This game is, is, is challenging. And, you know, I don't want to use the word hard, but it's hard. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, this game is not your standard MMO. You got to pay attention in a fight. You got to pay attention in a group. You got to pay attention in a in a ship hand, a dungeon, a raid. It 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 is challenging, and it and it's not compromising at all. It's not forgiving. So, it's a good thing for people who care about you know playing this level of gameplay. Yeah. I, I, Mark said it really, really well, so I'm not going to go off on too much, but I'm just going to say that it is so satisfying when you actually do a hard 
thing that you actually died on, and, and it's it's hilarious because when you die, then the game actually like has the little the the grave site that you come back at yells at you about it and makes little snide remarks and everything, and so it makes it all the more sweet when you actually complete it. And it's really really sad. It's it's I haven't felt this way in an MO since Vanilla WoW when I was doing the really really hard raids, but I feel that when I'm doing a ship hand or when I'm doing a like little quest or doing doing anything in the game because it's like. I mean, I mean, the telegraphs look easy to get out of, but the thing is that when you get later on in the game, some of the telegraphs you don't actually have to get out of. It's just like, this is a telegraph that you should know that you don't actually want to get out of it. You want to actually take control of it. Or, or that is an, another telegraph that you're not supposed to get out of. You're supposed to interrupt it. And there's a lot of skill in there that managing your cooldowns, managing all that stuff to actually get through those things. And even when you're fighting easy, weak mobs that maybe are even lower level than you, if you are just totally zoned out, you're going to die anyway. Because those telegraphs hit so hard when they actually do hit hard. It's it's really awesome to play. Well, maybe I'll get that that, that Dark Souls good feeling inside. <laughs> so let's hope so. All right, we got our last up here. I want to talk really quick, but really quick, uh, I just want to remind you guys, if you're uh, watching this show, if you haven't pre-ordered yet, we've got a great deal on Game Breaker. We've got 25% off both the standard edition or the digital deluxe edition. So we're not talking about saving just a couple pennies here. We're talking about you're saving like 15 bucks or maybe even more. So go over to gamebreaker.tv slash deals. Check that page. There's a bunch of other deals there as well on the page. So just look around. The the, uh, the Wildstar deal is right on that page. It's pretty much up at the top usually at all times right now because it's just super hot. Everybody's checking it out. But you can save 25% just by going through that. So go check it out. It's gamebreaker.tv slash deals if you haven't already pre-ordered. I know I see tweets like every day of people just be like, damn, I just pre-ordered it, and now you tell me this, and I just didn't save money. Sorry, you got to check the deals page. Check it all the time. Check it for all the games. There's going to be a lot of games to come, so it's not just Wildstar. It's a bunch of other stuff up there. Um, last up, I want to get your thoughts on this. Um, this is in response to a post that was titled, The Tutorial is Mind-Numbingly Boring. Uh, Jeremy Gaffney said that they were hoping to make it skippable after the first run through launch. Golf clap. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gaffney, because I kind of agree that after you've done it once, you don't want to do it again. Yeah. I mean, if I got to if I got to click those goddamn media floating video cameras every time, <laughs> yes. I'm just done with it. But what do you guys, is mind-numbingly boring a bit too harsh? What do you guys think of the tutorial? Do you mind the, running? The first time you do it, it's perfect. The first time you do it, it holds your hand, it kicks your butt, and it gets you through it, and you learn the mechanics of the system. The second time, you want to shoot yourself in the face. But that first time, everybody, unless you're just a dumbass, should go through it because it is good, and it does teach you. And it's, and it's not that long, and, and you learn it. But yes, you, you definitely do not need to go through it a second or third or whatever time. Once you get it, you've got it. Get spoon fed the first time. Teach a man to fish. You know, don't give him a fish. That's kind of the motto. But yeah, you know, being able to skip it the second time is definitely an imperative. I, I would say that, you know, I, as much as I actually liked the thing, like, again, the first time through, it was, it was pretty nice. But it is something that, especially even with the new UI, I'm a little bit disappointed that they still ha bombard you with so many damn windows everywhere. Tutorial windows, other data cron windows, other things. There's so many things that it's actually so overwhelming. I think that is one of the main reasons why so many people are trying the game, getting through the first half hour, which is that tutorial, and feeling like the game is bad. Because it is so just annoying getting all these pop-ups and everything all over the screen. That I, yeah, that is, it, my numbing and boring, I don't think it's it's too harsh. I think that, that is about on par, especially if you, after you've gone through it once, it's it's pretty damn boring. But even if you haven't gone through it once, it, it's really just like, oh my god, this is just, and you start cl closing stuff that you should be reading, because it's, te again, teaching you how to play the game, how to, like, uh, the number of times that I've seen somebody, like, in the zone chat, asking how do I get to a quest because they didn't realize that they could click on the objective to get the big arrow or whatever to point them towards it. It's like, hey, 
you just keep you closing it? those things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it? No, I'm kidding. If you don't know that, yeah, you should go through this tutorial once. I think forcing everybody to go through it once is good, but I am definitely happy that they're going to let you skip it. I think a lot of people out there are also happy that they're going to skip it. Yep. All right, everybody, the trio is back. The trio is back. Oh, I should mention this. Um, so for the next, <laughs> for the next, um, four to five weeks or so oh, yeah. um all of game breaker shows are being recorded on the weekends saturday and sunday i don't know what time yet i don't know what day yet udsp will be but um i am tied up for the next four or five weeks monday through friday pretty hardcore with uh, something a big project so we're doing all shows <laughs> on the weekends i don't know what day and time pay attention to like our facebook and our twitter which you should be following anyway and we'll try and get the word out to you as soon as possible um but i got to talk to all these guys and see when we can round up the troops and kind of do shows and some of them might be kind of on the fly and really quick with very little notice so the best way to kind of follow that is twitter facebook um but of course once we're done with the show, the next day goes up on TV. So just keep checking the site and it'll be up. Uh, Mark Taylor, who has become completely... Oh, I thought you were doing some mannequin miming or something with your magic hat number nine. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me on the Twitter at uh, Guild Umbra. And of course, you can go over to Guild Umbra. Check out their guild. The cool cats. He's still miming. It's good at it. Farhan Siddiqui. Follow uh, <laughs> him on Twitter at Unindel, U-N-I-N-D-E-L. And of course, right here on UDSP. And uh, I got to give a shout out to the Game Breaker Nation. If you guys want to join the Wildstar crew over on the Game Breaker Nation, just go to GameBreakerNation.com. Sign up to the guild. We're a cross-gaming guild. You could sign up for Wildstar there. There's a bunch of people already pre-signed up and tons of people playing. There. Just I forget how many registered people we have. Let me, let me take a look real quick. How many registered people do we have now? Is it 11,000? And we're going to have a Game Breaker Circle on whatever server we roll on. So regardless of what guild you're in, although you should be a nurse, uh, you'll be able to roll and hang with us. Yep, 11,000 uh, registered members now over on the nation. So go check it out. Go register GameBreakerNation.com. We got a bunch of other games as well. So whatever you play in the meantime, or if you play multiple games, I'm sure there's people playing. So check it out. Go to GameBreakerNation.com and sign up. All right, gang. So we do the show live. Um, we don't know when day. We don't know what time. I don't even know if Mark has pants on, but we'll be I back don't. next week not, at some point. I'm not point. wearing pants right now. And Should we'll, I do show another you? Show. we'll do another show for you at some point next week. No, don't show me. Have a great week. <laughs>